Welcome to the Buick Method, where today we will be dealing with absolute value functions. Now, if you watched my previous video, I showed you how to take this parent function and shift it up or down, depending on what adjustments we made to the equation. Okay, we're not going to be going up and down today. Today, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to slide to the left, slide to the right. Okay, we won't be doing any crisscross, but we will flip flop in a later video. Okay, um, so taking this parent function, shifting it this way, shifting it that way in the graph, no up and down movement. We can do both. Okay, I could move it right and up, and we'll get into that in later videos. But for today, let's just move it left, move it right, make sure we understand that and how that would adjust our equation. Okay, so we're going to go back to that equation that tells us everything we need to know, and that is y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h time or excuse me plus k so this is the equation that everything is based off of now in my previous video i showed you that a will tell us how to flip make it narrow or wide this here is going to show us left and right movement while the k shows us up and down movement. So everything we dealt with on the previous uh, uh, video was with K, moving it up, moving it down, okay? And it was natural. If it said plus, we went up. If it said minus, we went down. Simple as that. Now here on this one, things get a little bit tricky, and it has everything to do with the fact that we are subtracting H. We're not adding H in our equation, okay? It says minus H. And because it says minus h, things are going to be opposite of what your brain naturally will tell you. Okay, for example, if I were to give you the equation y equals the absolute value of x plus 4. First thing I need to think of is that plus 4 representing the a, the h, or the k. And it is inside the bars. Okay, inside of those absolute value bars. Therefore, it is representing my H. And when we look at what the H is telling us to do, it's telling us to move left or right. Now, naturally, our brain, when we see plus, tells us, hey, move to the right. Okay, add, move right on the number line, plus, move to the right. It all kind of connects. The difference here is in our equation, we're subtracting H, meaning... The only way to get a plus is if I were to, in the equation, be saying y equals x minus, because we're subtracting in the equation, what are we really subtracting? We're subtracting a negative 4. Double negative is the only way to make that positive. Okay? I'm sorry, I don't know why, but this is really bugging me. I'm going to fix those bars for you. Those weren't straight at all. There. A lot better. Okay? So we have subtracting a negative. Okay, negative means move to the left. As you can see from the origin, all my negative values are to the left, all my positive values are to the right. So when you see plus inside the bars, a good way to think of it is if it's inside the bars, we're talking left and right movement, just think opposite. Okay, think what is the opposite of what I would naturally assume. So I see plus, my natural thought is go to the right. In this case, we're actually dealing with a negative 4. So we're going to move 4 to the left. So if I were to graph this V or this equation, I'm going to move 4 to the left and put my low dot. Okay, that's going to be my line of symmetry. From there, I'm going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Up one, back one, and I would create this V. Now it looks like a checkpoint, or a check mark, I should say, just because we're not showing all of the V. But this line would continue on and on and on and on and on and on if we had more graph. So we have now shifted that V here and just moved it four spaces to the left, 
because inside of our equation we said plus 4. Now, if I were to subtract 1, remember in my original equation we're saying minus h. So if it st stays a minus or stays a subtraction operation, 1, that would mean my value that I'm placing down is a positive 1. And positive would be to the right. So again, if you see this, your natural instinct would tell you minus, let's move to the left one. That is not the case. Okay, you're actually going to do the opposite and move to the right one. So if I go one to the right, that's going to be my low dot. From there, I'm going to rise one, run one. Rise one, run one. Rise one, run one. Go up one, back one. Up one, back one. And this would be my graph. So we had the parent function shift 1 to the right with this equation. And it shifted 4 to the left with this equation. Okay, A little bit trickier than up and down movement just because you have to think of that opposite. But the same idea goes. Are we dealing with an A? Are we dealing with an H? Or are we dealing with a K? And once you determine what we're dealing with, you should know right away if we're going left, right, up, and down. And then we'll deal with on the next video what A is going to do. A can do a whole mess of things. Okay, so we're going to have to really prepare ourselves for flipping, narrowing, and widening. Um, but if, as long as you know your slope intercept form equations and what slope does, that's going to be a big help when dealing with the A in an absolute uh, value function. All right. Well, hopefully you guys understood this and prepared for your upcoming test. Good luck.